what a beautiful, beautiful day. Here on the Genetry Solar Homestead. So, <clears throat> just wanted to give you guys a real quick look at what I've done with the solar stand thus far. And this is not permanent. Let me back out here. This is not permanent. Um, as it turns out, materials, uh, that is the cost of materials, as well as my time, uh, one has skyrocketed, the other one has not. My time is zero, <clears throat> and the cost of materials is way up. When I uh, when I purchased these 4x4s about, I don't know, it's been about three, three and a half months now, <clears throat> they were, I think, about $35 for a 12-foot 4x4 at the local hardware store. Now... Well, they're about $75, <clears throat> if you can believe that. And it takes two 4x4s. Actually, it takes four 4x4s for every 10 feet of solar. Well, <clears throat> I guess technically only the first 10 feet. The first 10 feet have two, and then every 10 feet on top of it, you just add another two. <clears throat> so, whatever. Anyway, the point is, material cost has gone way up, including these signposts have also gone way up. <clears throat> the price of everything has gone way up, and it's terrible. So, um, yeah, this is kind of a little bit on hold right now. I'm hoping that next month I'll be able to add another 10 feet. Um, <clears throat> one of the issues, one of the main costs, believe it or not, is not the stand or the panels because I have plenty of panels. The main cost here is this wire right here this is used to this particular gauge is three gauge wire so it's used to this runs 125 feet to the charge controller and uh, if i were to put on another six kilowatts of solar <clears throat> what i would have to do is have another combiner box that would be positioned at the next 10 foot section which will be somewhere out here in this area. So from here to this point right here, <clears throat> all the way up to the house, all the way up there is about 160 feet. So in order for these panels running at about 150 volts or so, in order for that voltage to be able to travel all the way up there with minimal losses, that is minimal acceptable losses, I need to use two gauge wire running up to the charge controllers. Ideally, I'd like to go larger. However, the controllers themselves actually only accept two, and uh, that's as high as I can go. <clears throat> now, of course, I could split that, of course, um, but two should be adequate. I'll be losing a little bit, but not, not that much. It really is amazing how everything has gone up in price. And I've got solar panels everywhere, by the way. There's four leaning right there. I got a bunch sitting down there. I got a bunch in there. I got a bunch in the barn. <clears throat> so solar panels is not my issue right now. It's just getting the stand built, the controllers, the wiring, etc. I still have to bury the wire, but I'm waiting for this second set of 6K to go in before I start trenching for the wire because that would be pointless to trench for that one set of lines going up. And then I have to trench again and retrench up there or trench two no, that's pointless. I'm just going to wait until I can uh, trench just one and then go all the way up <clears throat> with both sets of wires. <clears throat> anyway, I noticed there's some articles that have been popping up recently, and I've, I've had opinions on this. I think I've mentioned this in a couple of videos um, about the resistance of energy providers to solar. Now, <clears throat> it depends on where you're at, of course. It really does. Not every energy company is opposed to solar or wind or whatever. <clears throat> However, they don't mind installing solar installations that they have control over, their costs, their rates, their everything, their staff, everything. What seems to be coming up more and more are those who decide to grid tie or be off the grid. <clears throat> now, obviously, 
I'm not completely off the grid. I have six kilowatts of running solar here. It gets me through the entire day, <clears throat> some of the night. Ideally, I need to have about 24 kilowatts of solar and I need to have at least a thousand amp hours of battery. So with that in mind, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% off the grid. So me being that I'm still on the grid, I'm still providing money to my local energy company or provider. However, when you go off the grid, that's gone. You are essentially disconnecting your service and you are no longer a paying customer. Now, of course, it depends on where you live, but think about something. This is a good example in my opinion. Electric cars. Electric cars, at least in our state, <clears throat> they've taken off. Uh, and they have, I mean, it still is a small amount compared to gasoline. However, that number is increasing. <clears throat> and it's increased enough where our state, a little while back, decided to start charging extra for yearly registration. We call it plates. Uh, it's charging extra <clears throat> for hybrid and electric vehicles. And the horse flies around here are terrible today. And they bite and they hurt. And anyways, I've got one that's bothering me right now ready to bite um <clears throat> so that was a response to road taxes essentially speaking in a perfect world that is all of our or most of our uh gasoline tax goes to our roads and if electric vehicles are not electric or hybrid that is are not um putting money into that pot by filling up their vehicles then obviously there's less money for the roads so in response the state at least state of michigan started charging extra to register a vehicle to hopefully make up for that now it's never going to make up for it because um, unless you were charging someone in the amount of an average driver's uh you know what was it twelve thousand or 15,000 miles a year times, you know, however many gallons it gets, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it adds up. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's a small amount now, but I do see that amount getting bigger and bigger as far as the amount of tax. But I use that as a good analogy because <clears throat> right now there's, um, there's a few grid tires out there. I mean, yes, there's programs out there. You've probably gone on Facebook and seen all those, oh, get solar for free and never pay a dime and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't ever work out that way, but... Um, <clears throat> there's enough people who are grid tied. California's even, uh, launched a proposal. I don't know if it passed or not that requires new homes, have solar panels on the roofs, etc. You know, there's, there's examples all over, but the thing is those of us who are off the grid, we are essentially the electric vehicle. We are not paying into the system we are living in our homes without electricity and we are not paying into the system now that might not seem like a big deal now i mean we have at least here in michigan i don't know about other places we do have mennonites that don't use electricity but they've been able to skirt the system and go pretty much unnoticed because they are few and far between. It is a religious matter that most politicians won't want to step on. <clears throat> and uh, they would just rather go after the normal person. So here I'm going off the grid and I am no longer paying taxes on the electricity. I am no longer paying for the pole to be... Uh, on the property that feeds into the line. I am no longer paying for any power lines or service or anything else like that at all, <clears throat> right? And there is profit there, okay? Even if your company claims that they're non-profit, they are self-profiting. That is, there's pensions to be paid, there's wages to be paid, there's investments to be paid, etc., etc. They may not have a for-profit 
uh, bottom balance, that is the bottom line, but they can easily say there's an extra 3 or 5% in pension every year. That all has to be paid for. I mean, they may not be profitable, but they still have bills they have to pay for. And it's come to the attention of Consumers Energy uh, here in Michigan that serves a good portion of Michigan. Consumers Energy started raising the rates during the daytime. Um, that is uh, during what they call peak hours. And uh, they started raising the rates on everybody. So it didn't matter if you were on a time of use program, your rates were going up. And that's there's nothing you can do about it. And the unfortunate fact is, just like cable, you can't just go in most cases, I know some areas that is an option, but for most of us, at least in Michigan, you have one option for electricity and one option only, and that's it. And if you sit there and tell me that, you know, screw the man and, and, and don't pay it and whatever, what are your alternatives? Uh, I ask you. Well, there is one alternative, and that is to go completely off the grid. Now, that is obviously a not a feasible option for those who live in the cities. Even if you have an acre of land in the city, it's likely that you're surrounded by buildings or, or whatever else that's going to block most of the sun. It's not going to be worth the expense to do so. So cities, unfortunately, they're locked down. And they really are. They're, they're locked in. You don't have any alternatives. That's it. You have to deal with it. Those of us who have some property have the ability to go off the grid. That is completely off the grid. We are no longer paying into the system. And this may sound like a rant. And I know that I'm droning on and on and on. But I predict, and mark my words on this video, I predict that there will be in the near future a push to punish or tax those who are off the grid to recuperate that lost revenue. Nonprofit or not, it doesn't matter. It's still lost revenue, not only for the company that provides your electricity, but also the government entities that surround it, your local, your state, your federal. Everybody has their hand in the pot. No matter what you say, no matter where you think those charge, you, you can look at your bill and say, oh, there's just these three charges. They wrap everything in to those three charges. They're not going to line by line itemize every single place that your pennies and dollars go to. It is what I would call a distribution fee. So they have a rate that they set per kilowatt usually of um, power. And you consume it, and then it goes into their pockets to be used for, obviously, paying the bills, power plants, power lines, maintenance, etc. But not all of it goes to that. And this the sad truth. Not all of it goes to where it needs to go. And if somebody's wallet is going to get thinner, then they're going to do something about it. And most energy companies have a lot of money on tap and they can lobby the right people that will implement some new laws, some new regulations, some new whatever that will not prevent you from going off the grid, but they'll sure tax the hell out of you for going off the grid. Usually you're paying $1,200 a year in electricity. Well, guess what? You're going to be paying $1,200 in taxes every year for being off the grid mark my words something similar to that is actually going to happen i know it you will because you are off the grid be punished for that they i i can see it i know it sounds all doomsday and stuff and and conspiracy theory but i can honestly see them being able to set foot on your property come up to your solar stand like mine count how many panels you have and charge you taxes based on that actually either homeowners or some other tax that they'll levy against you to have this stuff they'll roll it into some kind of a fancy property value tax or something that doesn't sound so heinous like we're literally stealing from your pockets and punishing you 
they'll roll it into something that will like when you add on a deck and you pay more taxes or add on uh, uh, another house or a barn or something else like that and then you got to pay more property taxes that's what they'll do they'll come up with a way to make it so that it doesn't sound bad it passes right through and before you know it you're paying more in taxes every year because you have solar that's just the the way that it is now i know there's some places right now they're they're like our state i guess um there was a proposal i don't know if it went anywhere where your home value your property value could be assessed um not in a negative way i don't remember exactly how it worked but essentially if you had solar then then the um uh the property assessor the value assessor would have to assess the property in addition to your solar whereas now or something i don't know it doesn't matter how much solar you have on your property it's not going to increase your property value now it might to a private buyer but we're talking taxes here. We're talking about um, government agencies here assessing taxes, right? <clears throat> so with that in mind, there's uh, Danielle out there. She's going to visit some of the trails that I just made. I made a whole bunch of trails out past our pond. Um, it was pretty hard for the, uh, I took my time. It was pretty hard for the lawnmower to get through because it looks like this. But uh, slowly but surely made it all the way through. I think she's going to go right through and see what I did. But anyways, so mark my words, um, you will be taxed. You will be punished because if you're off the grid and you're no longer paying into that system, you will, in fact, be taxed on it. Somehow they will come up with a way to collect that money. And I hate the two-faced presentation that some of these electric companies will will present like oh you can save energy by going led you can save energy by turning your thermostat uh down in the summer up in the winter or whatever you know what i mean um and they they pretend like if they put a video out on how to save energy that suddenly everybody is going to go out and start doing that no nobody does that okay nobody you see your electric bill, you get pissed for a day, and then a day later, you're like, okay, it's 100 degrees in this house, I'm turning on my air. I mean, that's basically it. They know that. It is a psychological thing. So they can preach to you about how you can save money when they know in the end you're not going to do anything about it. You might for a day, and then when you can't stand your house being 100 degrees, you're turning on that air. Because it's a lot easier to turn on that air at that moment and feel good about it and then you totally forget about it until you get that bill and you're pissed about it for a day and then you forget about it again. I mean, it's a vicious cycle. I'm guilty of it. Um, I know everyone else is guilty of it. So yes, there might be a few people who are like, I'm gonna take this serious and go and invest in LEDs and get the free two pack light bulb that my energy company provides. No, it's a facade. I mean, they're literally putting on a show to make it sound like they care about your energy usage when they don't, they really don't, sorry to say. Um, and again, I know this sounds all conspiracy theory, but really, seriously, consumption of energy, why are they continuing to build nuclear power plants all over the place? I mean, seriously, and don't say because, oh, well, they're putting solar, they can't put out as much electricity. That is certainly not the reason. Um, in Lansing, they're building a, a huge natural gas plant that's going to replace the current plant, and it's going to put out more power and be more efficient than the old setup. So why do they need more power? If everybody's going solar, if everyone's going off the grid or grid tied or whatever, why do they keep building more and more plants? I mean, seriously, energy usage has increased. So they can make up all this crap about saving money on your electric bill by turning your thermostat up or down or whatever but they know that people are not going to neighborhoods are being built at a record pace they all need electricity more sky high sky rise buildings are being built they're going to need more electricity i mean it's there's you know you can see it you can see what's going on <sighs> anyways i'm telling you i'm telling you right now what's going to happen is a uh, township inspector is going to be driving down that road right there. It's going to see my huge solar array that's eventually going to be up, the whole thing. They're going to write that down in their book, and they're going to figure out a way to monetize it. That's all there is to it. 
They're going to figure out a way, any way they can, to monetize it. Why? Well, because the money has to be in the pot somewhere, come from some place. So if you can't get it from person A uh, through you know, normal taxes, well, then you're obviously going to punish the uh, person in another way, all right? So that's, that's just the way it is. I know this sounds really far-fetched to some of you, but I can honestly see it happening. Being off the grid is something that more and more people are doing now. It's not something that, you know, it was just like this little hippie kind of nerdy technology kind of thing because it was cost prohibitive and in most cases you got to do something like this where you got to build your own stand and you know things like that and i understand there are companies that do have grid interactive systems which include batteries but you're still at the mercy of the energy company okay that's just the way it is you're still depending on them and the energy that you produce is still going to somebody else i mean it's just no, whether it comes from the sun, whether it comes from the ground, whether it comes from the wind, whether it comes from nuclear, whether it comes from coal, it doesn't matter. It's coming from somewhere, and the energy companies are making money on that. That's all there is to it. But if you take yourself out of the system altogether, they're not making any money on you. Suddenly they've lost customers, and they're going to lobby to get that money back. I mean, they are a company that has to make money. And so yeah anyway conspiracy theory i think is over with but i fear that that time will come sooner than we think um and more and more people i mean i am in the business of renewable energy particularly off the grid and i talk to a lot of people every single day and more and more people are saying to hell with the system more and more people are worried about hackers taking down the system more and more people just want to be independent of the system go back to a simpler time when they didn't have to worry about going to the grocery store or paying an electric bill or whatever more and more people are opting out of the system but you have to find a way to recuperate those costs those that income and they're going to start taxing you taxes it's going to happen taxes and fees Hell, they'll even discourage you by saying that your system is not properly this or that, and it needs to be uh, blah, 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 inspected or whatever. Well, luckily out here, as far away as we are, nobody gives a damn, but that's not going to be that way forever. I guarantee you it's not. The, the plague is going to spread. It's going to spread far and wide, and before you know it, everybody's just going to say, to hell with this and just start paying the grid again. I mean, only the most diehard people who don't want to pay $1,500 a year or choose to pay $1,500 a year just to stick it to the man or whatever, um, well, they're going to stay off the grid. But I'm going to be really, really interested over the next couple of years. I'm going to be watching it close because I predict that it's going to happen. I, I really do. People are buying land at a crazy rate. People are trying to get away from the cities at a crazy rate. And they're not just getting away from the cities so that they can have peace and quiet and don't have to listen to the noise of the city or something like that. They're getting away from the city so that they can grow their own food, so that they can produce their own energy, so they can be self-sustaining. That's what it is. And if those people are no longer paying into the system, then you can be damn well sure somebody is going to figure out a way to recuperate those lost income. Okay? Anyway, 24 minutes of ranting and conspiracy, and I'm certain that the comment section is going to be lit up with people who are either really, really disagree with me, maybe agree with me, or very, very agree with me. It's going to be a broad spectrum, and that's why I like this channel, because I can have opinions, I can learn from the comments, I can do research based on where people point me, and it's great, but... More and more, I am seeing um, a discouraging trend. It's small, but it is building. And more and more, I see the the I can see the companies who have been used to receiving that money. They're going to try to find a way to get that money back if they lose it. And I'm a prime example of that because I am not paying nearly as much electricity as I was. So, anyways. 
thanks again for everything here it is thursday evening and i'm finally done decided to do a video because i was reading a really nice article on um how some power companies are discouraging rooftop solar uh which in most cases for people who do live in neighborhoods rooftop solar is your only way to go you can't put it out in your front yard rooftop solar is the way to go so come up with ways to discourage that of course why not so anyway uh thanks again for all of your support as always take care